There are certain times in our world's history that we can pinpoint a certain event that changed the history of this world. 9-11, we can go back to there. It changed the history of our world. Um, before that time, you could walk up to a plane and just get on it. Now you have to go through security. Uh, families could meet their people at the gate. Can't do that anymore uh, because of that one event. Um, another one I went to is World War II. You know, a few years ago, me and Mona had the opportunity to go to Louisiana and visit the World War II Museum. And we loved it. We stayed the whole day. Um, and our kids were dragging us out of there because we love that point in history. But there was one point that was made during that whole time that it kind of stuck with me. And it was D-Day. Because when you look back at that, they didn't have no other options. <laughs> they say that in the video, that that was it. That if they lost that battle, the Nazis were going to take over. And that's one point that we can look at in the time that it points to that history. Well, in the Bible, we realize that there's also a point in history that the whole Bible kind of points to. It's Jesus and him coming on the cross for us. And we're going to look at a few verses in the Old Testament to kind of focus today of how it points to that one time in history that changed the world forever. Um, since the time of Adam and Eve sinned in the garden with, uh, throughout the Old Testament, it has been pointing to Jesus saving us. In Genesis 3, verse 15, it says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. The first, uh, first this verse is establishes as a principle that runs throughout the Old Testament, creating an expectation of a redeemer who would be uh, a descendant, a seed. In Luke verse 1 through 32, when Mary discovers that she is ex uh, expecting a baby, Gabriel announces that her con concerning her future son, he shall be great and will be called the son of the Most High and the Lord God and give him the throne of his father David. Clearly picking up on the phrase already made in both Abraham and David. And we'll just look at Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 2 where it says, And I will make you a great nation. And I'll bless you and make your name great, and so you shall be blessed. Second, in Genesis 3, verse 15, it establishes the parameter by which God will redeem his people from, his, from their sin. Clearly, this is a metaphor for that in context is to be contrasted with the blow the serpent received. But it is immediately apparent that it involves the shedding of blood. If we go to Hebrews 9, verse 22, it talks about that shedding of blood. And, in accord, and according to the law, one may almost say, well, all things are cleansed by, with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Christ was, died once for, the sin, uh, for our sins, if you go down in Hebrews 9, verse 27 through 28. And in as much as it is appointed for a man to die once, and after this comes judgment. So Christ also, having been off offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference, uh, reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. The People's New Testament note says this, Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Every sin under the law requires atonement, and no atonement could be made without blood. So these two, uh, uh, this goes back to all the way to Genesis 3, verse 15. And the third is in Genesis 3, verse 15, this verse established a cosmic explanation for the disorder in the world. Satan is at work. In Ephesians 6, verse 12, it says this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the ruler, against the powers, against the forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces, wickedness in the heavenly places. The People's New Testament notes also says, Satan is described as the ruler of this world and the God of this world. He uses in, for his dominion not only evil spirits, but wicked men, and his way is uh, darkness rather than light. And we can look at a few verses in John 8, verse 14, describes Satan as a liar. You are the father, uh, you, you are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand the truth because there is no truth in him. 
Whenever he speaks, he lies. He speaks from his own nature for a liar and a father of liars. And in Ephesians 6, verse 11, it says that there are schemes that the devil is continually doing to try and take us over to his side. And it says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Fourthly, in Genesis 3, verse 15, it says, the principles of the victory of the kingdom of God over the kingdom of darkness is established from the beginning. It also established that Jesus Christ will dream us and be victorious against the dark schemes of the devil. We can look at several other verses in the Old Testament. We're not going to go through them because there's over 300 um, that point to that very point, point. But I'll point out a couple. In, Acts, uh, in, no, in Isaiah 7 verse 14 it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will be called Emmanuel. You can turn over to Matthew 1 verse 18 through 25. And it talks about this very point that Jesus was from a virgin and that he was going to be called Jesus. And then in Micah 5 verse 2 it says, But you, uh, Bethlehem, though you are small among your clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origin are from of old form ancient times. And in Matthew 2 verse 1 it says, Now when Jesus was born of Bethlehem of Judea, in the day Herod, Herod the king, behold, there came a wise man from the east in Jerusalem. Isaiah 8 verse 14 is another one that we can look at. He will be a holy place a, a, for both Israel and Judah. He will be a stone and cause people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. And we can see in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 23 that it talks about this very thing, that it will be a stumbling block for the Jews and a folly to the Gentiles. And then Zechariah 9 verse 9, receive Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes from the right, uh, righteous and victorious, slowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt and a foul, uh, the foul of a donkey. Um, this is referring to Mark, verse, uh, Mark chapter 11. As I stated earlier, there are over 300 verses that talk about the points to this point in history. Today we remember Jesus because without him we would have... We would not have a chance. Sin has separated us and his sacrifice brought a salvation for our sins. Finally, we will read the resurrection of Jesus because without this, we are lost in our sins and all this is meaningless. We can celebrate in the fact that Jesus changed the world and the Old Testament points to this one point in time. In Luke 24, 1 through 12, and we'll read this right now and conclude this Lord's Supper talk. And it says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took uh, the spices and that the, they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the tomb rolled away uh, from the, the, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like light, lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men uh, said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Redeem. Remember how he told you while you were still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be sacrificed, and on the third day be risen again. Then they remembered this word. When they came back from the tomb, they told these things to eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and others with them told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to, to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes of linen lying uh, by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. So as we partake of this Lord's Supper, Let's look at this very point in history that changed the world for each one of us and gave us that chance of eternal life.